from Hamburg and after that astonishing victory by Boris Baski last week in this World Cup final this week we begin the playoffs and the rules here are very slightly different they now have to play all their moves in a quarter of an hour each which means no game can last longer than half an hour they will play two games first of all if they're still level after that they will then go on playing a quarter of an hour games until somebody wins and becomes the first winner of this FIDE chess World Cup Right, will the two players, Boris Spassky, the former world champion from the Soviet Union, and Anatoly Karpov, also from the Soviet Union, the reigning world champion, they are ready to make the draw for who plays white in the first of these 15-minute games. I have a white pawn and a correct pawn. <laughs> Bill, is it a, an advantage in a two-leg replay like this to start with white or black? Players have different views. I prefer white in the second game. Then you know what you've got to do. So Boris Spassky is going to have white in the first game, and he's off. So Petrov's defence that Karpov's played has a very reliable reputation as a, an equalising opening. They're playing very quickly. Well, of course, having to play all their moves in 15 minutes, they haven't got too much time to think. And Queen's exchanged already, that, that's very quick. Looks as though they're both planning for a very slow game. And here's the positions. Baskey's just played this, advanced his pawn to this c4 square. And Karpov's stopping to think about this move. With Queen's off, of course, one feels the game might, might head for a draw. But Spassky has a slightly nagging advantage. He has more pieces developed than Karpov. And this pawn that he's just advanced to c4 is a stake for more space in the centre of the board. So Karpov has some slight problems to overcome in this game. As it's turned out, uh, Anatoly Karpov has managed to solve his problems and uh, Boris Spassky hasn't managed to exploit his advantage. And in fact, that first game has ended as a draw. So now we're waiting for the second leg of this World Cup final replay when it will be Anatoly Karpov, the world champion, playing white. The second leg of this two-leg final, Anatoly Karpov, the world champion, to play white. Boris Spassky, the ex-world champion, to play black. One draw so far. Karpov to start. With me, Bill Hartston and Yasser Sarawan. Bill? Karpov setting off like a greyhound. Two moves absolutely instantly. Three moves absolutely instantly. It's another Piotr's Robach sort of defence. Karpov stopping to think at move four. There's no time to waste in 15-minute games. So far, it's a simple repetition of the uh, second game they played. Uh-huh. Now there's something new. Generally, this move isn't preferred because black likes to retain the bishop g4 options. And I, I, think, uh, I think this is wrong already. Do you think Spassky's going to play another hippopotamus, Bill? That would be pushing his luck against Karpov. Yes, I, sh I should think so. I mean... Uh, it's quite, quite clear that Karpov likes to play orthodox openings, but Boris will be taking a big risk walking into... Boris has taken a big risk. He's just developing his pieces behind this, this third rank pawn front. Tempting Karpov to come forwards. It's the same opening he played against Timan. That was the only half point he dropped in the preliminaries. Very provocative. This is something I don't like by Boris, though, the move h6. It seems like this will be a simple weakness, and Karpov will just be able to pound on it with queen d2. And Karpov having a little think here. It was, it was interesting in the first game that Karpov, at one stage, spent around about seven or eight minutes thinking about just one move, and that in a 15-minute game. And here he is again now, obviously deciding on what his middle game strategy is going to be. Get the impression, Bill, that uh, Karpov has become an absolute ace clock handler during this tournament. He started off 
slightly tepidly against John Nunn with those two draws, but he really seems to have got on top of the quick games. He had time to adjust from the normal two and a half hour limit to a one hour limit. Now he has to adjust from a one hour limit to a 15 minute limit. And in the first 15 minute game, I think his clock handling was rather poor. Wasted a lot of time early in the game. Now he's having to think again. Spassky's forcing him to think by this very strange choice of opening. Karpov normally has his opening repertoire completely worked out and can just play the moves quickly. So it's, it's a good thing for Spassky to have chosen something really rather odd. And also, of course, Spassky can think during Karpov's thinking time. Hmm. This is a nice move by Karpov. The idea is to provoke weaknesses on the queen side. I might have chose a6 rather than a5. Now I give up the b5 square. Spassky has clearly decided to play very quickly. A decision like that, whether to play a6 or a5, in a normal game you could spend 15, 20 minutes on. In a 15 minute game you can't spend 20 minutes on it. It's a very good idea just to trust your intuition at this speed and play very quickly indeed. I think Karpov has the better position, but Spassky's impressing with more with his clock handling. What I do like about Spassky is the fact that his face never changes. You can never tell whether he's about to be mated or whether he's about to annihilate his opponent. Spassky said earlier in his career that he used to find he was giving away his emotions about the position too easily that he taught himself to adopt a clown's mask, he said, on his face. It's very difficult playing against him. You, you don't get any idea of what he, what he thinks of the position. It's a funny move, moving his knight. Why is Karpov retreating his knight? Uh, I think it's excellent, ac actually. Uh, White will like to bolster his center by playing the move f2, f3. I consider this move probably a wholly defensive move and that he'd like to regroup the knight, particularly to f4 via d3. Uh, I've, I enjoy this move. This is a good move, very good move. So yes. Karp Karpov's just playing to keep that space advantage in the center, the pawns on d4 and e4. He doesn't want to advance them yet. Just I would say so. There. I would say so. It seems that perhaps Spassky wasn't uh, expecting that move going by the thought he's going to put in now. This is the first time Spassky's really stopped to think in the game. It's curious to remember... Ah, oh, he's oh. played f5 at his first, his first attack on the center. And now Karpov will presumably just play f3 rather quickly to support his center. Yes, actually, I don't even like this move f5, especially is to the effect that Karpov considered this when playing knight e1. Now black seriously is weakened e6, and unless he's going to castle kingside, um, his king will remain in the center, where it, where e6 will be particularly weak. I would have chosen, perhaps, in this moment, to try to castle queenside, maybe playing knight f8. Well, and Karpov having another think, because uh, already he's spent four, four and a half minutes on his move, and Spassky has spent rather less than two minutes on his. What do you think he's thinking about? Bill? Well, he played this knight e1, apparently intending to play f3 next move, and it looks so natural. Uh, I don't see why. Well, he's played it, but, but why waste the time? A little unpractical, you're right. Still, Spassky now has the problems. Uh huh. Well, Spassky's fighting back for space here. I don't think his position's so bad. Yeah. Excellent check. Now Spassky has to make a very, very tough decision whether or not to exchange white square bishops or block his own diagonal with c6. Or move his king. He's been happy moving his king earlier in this tournament. Well, moving the king will almost automatically rule out any captures against e4 as the king will be on the same file as the rook on f1. But maybe that's the best decision. King f8 or king f7. I have the feeling this is a very critical moment in this game, Bill, where uh, Spassky certainly uh, must be trying to work out his plan to A, to take some of this centre space and then B, a longer term plan of how to exploit his space and nail Karpov. This is the trouble with these unconventional openings, that you get difficult positions, not necessarily bad positions. And playing a, a difficult, slightly cramped position like this usually takes a lot of thinking time. 
It, it is a very provocative decision by Spassky to play this opening. I know certainly he said that he's very, very keen indeed to win this game, very, very keen indeed to win this tournament. Oh, he's moved. Spassky had to wait nearly ten years for that victory against Karpov in the second game of the final. The last time he'd beaten him was the first game of their match in 1974, I think. Actually, Maybe the second victory will come more quickly. I think that was the first victory by a Soviet player against Karpov outside of Karpov's country, the Soviet Union, actually. A little flurry of exchanges there. Yes, very nice by Karpov. He wishes to open up the center against Black's king in the hopes that Black's king is, is, is forced to stay there because of the weakness on h6. That queen and bishop of whites bearing down on the h6 pawn stops Black castling. Exactly. But the exchanges of, of bishops has slightly eased Black's cramp. Still, one must prefer Karpov's position here. Yes, for the moment. This must really be the critical moment of the game. The position is so open, or liable to become open very quickly, and Black's king in the center. Spassky has to decide very quickly what to do about that king. Well, all Boris really has to do is simply consolidate the center. In other words, keep, keep the center frozen, and his bishop on g7 could become a very formidable piece on the long diagonal. And at best, maybe even a capture on d5 will weaken uh, create a weak pawn there on d5. Simply taking on d5 certainly looks the natural move for Spassky here. Exactly. And at the moment it's Spassky having to do the thinking. It was Karpov uh, at the very early stages of this game, but they're almost level on time now. Karpov perhaps has spent uh, no more than a minute more than Spassky has. The idea about keeping poker faces is very, uh-huh, 97, very strange. I would have expected the knight d5 almost more quickly. Must have been afraid of white's queen recapturing. Yeah, that's, that wouldn't have been clear to me in any case. Now it seems that white has a very, very simple choice, and knight takes e7, e takes f5, and knight d3. It looks like all of Black's pawn weaknesses will be telling in any kind of ending. He even has some possibilities of taking on f6 to make the Black Bishop move from g7, and then the h6 pawn doesn't have enough defense. Also a strong possibility. I was just going to briefly mention about poker faces and the idea of not giving up one's emotions and what one is thinking. One of the most infuriating experiences of my life was playing Karpov in Mar del Plata, uh, where I played a 10-hour game with him, and throughout most of the game was actually killing him. And yet he would never sweat or show in any way the fact that he was lost. And he eventually drew the game. Very, very annoying. I say Karpov does give the impression over the chessboard of being rather of a chilly sort of person. In fact, he's anything but off the board. Very lively, amusing sort of person. Spassky still calls him a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, that's because his teeth are sharp. Another impression about Karpov is actually at the board. He doesn't seem to be energetic or moving about and he keeps uh, what he's thinking inside himself so very well, you, you, you really have the impression he's doing nothing when actually he's trying to kill you. Well, he's having a very long think here, Bill. This was about the same stage in that first game where he had that eight or nine minute thing. He can't afford that amount of time in this sort of position, I wouldn't have thought, but he's obviously calculating very, very carefully. Perhaps one can expect a great flurry of moves in a moment. After a long think like this, I'd certainly expect some quick moves. Well, frankly, I really don't know what he's thinking about. Knight takes e7 and e takes f5 to me seems so very clear and so Karpovian, if you will. Um, like, because this is such a crucial game, I mean, uh, either playing player winning wins the tournament automatically, that I would expect him just to play very solidly. 
Unless he's thinking about an attack with C4, I would quickly have played 97 ages ago. C4 is quite Carpovian too, just to, to go for more space. Yes, but it involves a slight risk. I mean, in the fact that uh, now you're really committed to the attack and with your knight on E1. It must be quite nerve-wracking for Spassky here, uh, having Karpov calculating, calculating, and wondering just where the whammy is going to come from. I'm still waiting for this Karpov knight on E1 to complete its maneuver to D3 and F4. I'm waiting for that for some time. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, now Karpov is down to around about uh, six and a half, seven minutes. Uh -huh. C4. It's just supporting that central knight. Very strange decision. It's Spassky's turn to think. He seems surprised by it too, because he's been thinking during all of Karpov's time. He should have been ready with a reply. Yes. Since they're in time trouble from the start of this game, one of the rules is to think while your opponent is thinking. Be ready with responses. One has the feeling very slightly that there's a, a battle of wits going on here, not just at the immediate level of the game, but really trying to find something totally unexpected to outwit the other person, something they really wouldn't have thought about at all, couldn't have prepared for. I think that was certainly Spassky's reason for his choice of opening. Mm. I don't think one has time to find things like that in the middle of the game. What do you think Spassky's real problems are in this position? Because this is really a very long think. It's his king. He's wondering where to put it. He can't stay in the centre, can't go to the king's side. And there doesn't seem any clear way to get it to the queen's side. Oh! King oh. f7. This is a very ugly move. I would have almost expected Boris to play knight on e7 takes d5 to be followed by queen d7 and trying to castle long. Or no. perhaps even g5 and castle short, but no. this position I don't like at all now. Karpov likes Spassky's move. He played very quickly knight to d3. Yes, exactly. I've noticed that uh, Boris has been doing a little smoking recently. Normally he isn't a smoker. And, uh, well, when you're playing a 15-minute game, does he really have the time to stop and light a cigarette and take a deep drag? No. Perhaps it helps calm his nerves, yes, sir. Uh, mm. He has no nerves. Nerves of steel, right? Mm. Now I really like White's position. I think he's just built up an attack. He hasn't had to sacrifice anything, and uh, g given free reign of the position, he's he will develop a stranglehold on it. An yeah. important thing in playing these constricted openings with black, as Spassky has done here, is not to give yourself any weaknesses, but he has a weakness on h6, and his king is vulnerable. He has a very difficult position, but he still has a few minutes more on the clock. Karpov's down to five minutes now. I really don't like Karpov's clock handling in this game. No, Karpov's down to just about five, and Spassky's on about nine. Ah, he's taken that pawn on h6. Yes. Simple and very effective. Now. It's up to Black to prove that the, that this pawn loss was is going to get him some kind of a play, and I frankly don't see it. Well, he has a rook on the open h file. Maybe White will get mated down there. Play bishop d4 check, force the king to h1. Then no, there I... are grounds for optimism. Uh -huh. Well, I always say, give me your pawns, baby. <laughs> well, Bill, you've been tipping Spassky all the way through this tournament. Uh... If you think there are any grounds for optimism, it probably means you don't think he's winning. I've had more pessimistic moments for Spassky in this tournament. His position was much worse than this when he won the second one-hour game. Yes, this move I like. Yes, Karpov wants those bishops off, then all the black squares are his. Most certainly. Not only that, but he removes his bishop from danger himself. Ah, Karpov's not moving his king into the corner after that check. Uh, not a chance of that. Yes, any, any exchange of pieces at this point most certainly will favor Karpov. 
Karpov with uh, slightly less than five minutes on his clock. Spassky with round about eight and a half. Spassky a pawn down with a vulnerable king. Really doesn't look good for him. Hmm, interesting decision. Uh, he probably wants to switch queens to the king side, but I'm not so sure that this was correct. He's attacking uh, the c4 pawn of the queen too. Well, he's going to walk into a knight f4 tempo, it appears. Exchange of bishops. There it is. I honestly don't see what... Oh, well, this is going to... This is a very, very crucial point for Boris now. He's grabbed the pawn. Oh, this looks horrible. He's overlooked that the defense on c7 is impossible now. Uh-oh. I... I'm predicting horrible things now. White's piece is getting through to... Oh, Carp Spassky's touched that rook. Oh, no. He's going to lose our rook. He's overlooked the fork on g6. Oh, here it is. Unbelievable. Oh, that's an absolute disaster. That's really not about scoring so cool. the home goal in the last moment of extra time in the cup we play. What, a, what an anticlimactic and sad way of finishing not only the match, the game, but the whole tournament. So... Terrible defeat there for Boris Spassky, a real, real blunder, and he must be what he obviously is, deeply upset about that. Boy, I could never imagine a tournament ending so quickly and so, so immediately. Oh, that's a real, real blow, and you're absolutely right. Well, Bill, it certainly was a dreadful blunder by Spassky, though, but uh, looking at this position a few moves before it, because we can see it again, do you still think he was in this game with chances at that point? If we just look at the last five moves of the game, we can see that Spassky's nerves really did completely give way at, at the end of this. Here he's already in difficulties, he's a pawn down, but his last few moves really made things much worse. He started by bringing his queen to this e6 square. Now that's already a mistake because it lets the queen be attacked later by a knight on f4. Now first, Karpov exchanged bishops. Spassky recaptured. And now came this, this really killing knight f4 move, attacking that queen. Now, it's not only attacking the queen, the knight attacks the queen, but white's queen attacks Spassky's knight. Now, this, this grabbing the pawn that Spassky played now was really almost desperation. He has to move the queen somewhere to defend the knight. And now everything starts falling apart. Rook attacks the queen. Now, at the time, I thought... Spassky was uh, sort of happily grabbing pawns, but the queen's really just staying to defend that knight. And now white's rook came right in, and this exposed black king is really getting killed now. And this was where he picked up this rook and then suddenly noticed what happened. But his, his position's quite disastrous anyway. The rook had to move in the way on e7. Karpov took the rook. Spassky recaptured. And then this terrible knight fork, knight forking king and rook and that's where Spassky resigned but the last five moves were terrible by Spassky so a real disaster for Boris Spassky but at the same time let's remember that if one man mourns another rejoices and Anatoly Karpov the world champion the man who is rejoicing the man who's won this first World Cup final Anatoly have you found there's been any big difference between playing these games in an hour as a single two and a half hour games? <laughs> yes, it is a completely different game. And uh, I didn't expect I didn't expect it is so tough. And uh, it's uh, even over than two times because first of all you play two games uh, daily and uh, especially you play one hour time limit. Uh, you must concentrate uh, all the time for four hours and in normal game in normal game you can be only once in time travel but here you can be twice do you like it as a time control uh, I think it's possible and it's not bad training for the serious tournament uh, but uh, it's it's very hard to play two games uh, per day mm. Uh, one, uh, one game per day is okay. So all that's left of this first ever chess World Cup is the closing ceremony with the president of FIDE, Friedrich Olofsson. First I would like, and that's Mr. Boris Pasky, and Master Boris Pasky, to come here and receive his prize money.
Well, as I said before, it is not easy to change the conventional play in such a drastic way, but uh, the world champion withstood the, <laughs> the onslaught and he's, he came through uh, victorious. I would like to ask the world champion Anatoly Karpov to come forward and please see the first number.